I'm not gonna believe this, man. 2K is focused on making a good product or making money? I don't think they're ever focused on making a good product. Mm, I think in 2024, flex. it's only making money. It's just money. Mm. If there was any realm up there Damn. paying attention to me. Flex, badge plug, G-Man, then made a special appearance. Do y'all see how successful G-Man channel is, right? Do you know how bad the game has to be? That's just free money. Do, do y'all not understand the process? All he has to do, go to the park, laugh with his homies, upload the vid, free money. Tens of thousands of dollars. He's, I couldn't take it anymore. It's that bad. Isn't that a concern? No, y'all just think y'all right. Okay. All the other popping creators disappear without a sight. They couldn't take it anymore. Y'all just free money. Hey man. In a good game, you would see the move way I think it's a combination of both. Um, but also, you know, there's a, a bottom line. There's also, you know, stuff you have to do to, to make money. The people at the top, I think are certainly focused on making as much money as possible. I think there's mm -hmm. different teams focused on different things. And I think the majority of their teams are focused on making money. I think uh -huh. that they're focused on both. What they kind of lack is a competitor right now. And if they had a competitor, I uh -huh. think they would focus more on. Y'all got to keep in mind, the guys that are currently saying both right now, they're more affiliated with 2K. Ain't gonna hold you. I'm making it a good product. Nowadays, like, they can kind of do whatever they want, get away with whatever they want, mm. because there's no competition. There's no, like, repercussions. For I can't blame them, but it is what it is. Shout out Young Bad. NBA 2K, the game we all used to love, but now it's the game we all love to hate. Any Damn. idea why? It's gotta be the egregious microtransactions, the constant oh advertisement stuff in your face every oh time God. you open a game mode, or the antics that the company itself are up to. All of these oh are God. extremely sound reasons to despise the game, oh and God. I wouldn't blame Listen, guys, guys. Do you know, listen, listen, I'm gonna I'm spit some real that's not talked about enough. I gotta start pushing. This game is so bad, it's not for kids anymore. Any game that's not for kids is insanity. Guys, it just came down to a hundred a build. Like, what are we talking about? And then it's so easy to mess up your build. Guys, you don't even know that key animations while you're making your build you know how much of a like a geek you gotta be to know like oh these type of dunks once you figure it out you done already waste a hundred something dollars on your build this is all by design you feel me this whole not marketed so for kids this is why i be flaming the creators that be double twisting this you feel me it's not for kids i barely hear kids on the game that's crazy Y'all played older games? Oh, you hear kids all the time. People be trying to blame kids for it. They don't even play this anymore. You feel me? That's wild. And they would love to play it, but it's it's too expensive. You feel me? They're pushed away. There's better products out there. This hurts YouTubers. YouTubers aren't even figuring this out. They don't understand that if 2K was way cheaper, you goofy, there will be 10 times more people on the game. There will be double triple you'll be getting double triple the views because more people would be playing the game because it's cheaper imagine if builds were all ten dollars how many people would be on the game think about all the people they push away because of this guys this is why i say stop double twisting get off your knees you feel me close your mouth for even thinking any of these reasons are the culprit. But I regret to inform you, you couldn't be any more wrong. One of the biggest problems plaguing the 2K community is not being able to diagnose the actual reason we hate NBA 2K. It's no secret that NBA 2K has pushed us as consumers to buy into the most invasive microtransactions mm -hmm. of all time, sold us an unfinished product on an annual basis, and at times completely lied to us. My understanding is that you can completely rebuild your guy. <laughs> Gameplay is gonna be so different from what it is today to then that it's not even, you know, that. But let's take that a deeper dive into the real reason reason yo, why you don't like yo that was such a funny time bro he's like that's not the part but you could think whatever you want to you don't know so funny they probably didn't even tell bull you know like he didn't even know that's so funny man like 2k would you ever play 2k without buying vc no you can't you're gonna get torched <laughs> oh, no oh hell no personally Damn. as a youtuber i would never do that i'm doing it right now and let me tell you if it wasn't my job i think after playing 2k for like 10 plus years i might not but if i'm just a basketball fan and i've never played 2k before i i, I probably would there's no chance <laughs> like ever solo stop it this ain't this ain't your twitter we on you my boy now look if you get on the game and you go play and you see you have a low overall you're gonna go play and get cooked by bots right your build gonna be so trash everybody's gonna be upgraded you are basically forced unless you want to you know deal with just getting 
if you can deal with that, then go ahead. 60 on your own, 70. And not everybody want to play my career. That takes so long, so many man hours, guys. You feel me? Like, not everyone enjoys my career. Some people want to play online. No one wants to feel like it's a job to upgrade their player. They want to play the game. Imagine if in Call of Duty, imagine if in Call of Duty, you really had to grind your guns in the story mode, or you had to play versus people who had like a way, way, like way better gun. Like guys, y'all know 60 overall you versus 99 overall you, 99 overall you is destroying them. Imagine if the gap was that big between like your starter guns and the other guns in Call of Duty, riot. But we're so conditioned that, you know, that's crazy for a game. But they can monopolize this whole because basketball, people love ball, concept, all that. That's crazy, man. This is why people, they get so turned off. And then later, once they find better or all that, lead is, feel me? People don't like just being, <clears throat> man. I'm not gonna lie. I was thinking about this the other day. My IRLs, like, they literally can't play, like, park with me because they don't have a build and, like, they're not gonna spend $70, oh, 50 to $70 for, like, 85 or 90 overall or something like that. Now, as a YouTube. And, and you, look, you, W Flex, you know, so funny. They'd be like, what? $70? Like, you know? But that that's normal to us. You feel me? What? The game price? That's nothing. Y'all know, like, when we upgrade our build, that's more than the game. Like, we're, we're buying the game over and over again. When we upgrade a build, like, do y'all know how much that turns people off? That's not in other communities, man. That's wild. I do buy VC the first day of the game every single year because I need to make my content. I need mm. to upload my videos. I need to get gameplay. I need to stream. Because otherwise, if I didn't do that, I'd be a 60 overall. Wouldn't be able to show off really anything. If you were work, like working a full-time job or uh, going to school full-time and trying to play the uh -huh. game with no VC, it's almost impossible. I mean, I would consider there myself definitely above average in terms of skill. If you were average or below average trying to play on a 60... Y'all hear how humble Joe is being? I'm not saying he's God's gift, but you know, W pander, Joe, W pander. I know, you know, be like, eh, I'm just, I'm all right. Instead of saying, I'm a one percenter in skill, you know? Hey, those are the tricks of the trade. Y'all want to grow on this social media thing? No. Something overall, and you don't have people to play with who are also very good at the game to like help you grind that VC. The amount of time it would take is insane. Even for someone like me, like this, like hard on the mentals. Like mm -hmm. this is a grind. Honestly, if you're in the park, I mean, you might be able to get away with like a couple of dubs here, but it's never gonna be like long term fun. Like you're always gonna uh -huh. run into the same problem. Like oh, I can't do that because I don't have upgrade. I didn't buy VC for years. I bought VC this year because of player market. Um, I bought VC last year when I could directly buy some players for videos. But other than that, like if I wasn't making content, I would never spend a set of VC in this game. It wouldn't be fair to talk about microtransactions. <laughs> without explaining the history of them and how it's even come this far. So for starters, what is a microtransaction? A purchase that players can make within a game using real money. You can obtain mm -hmm. special items, in-game currency, or other cosmetic items. Seems pretty simple, right? The first actual microtransaction in gaming dates all the way back to 2006 when Bethesda... What's Bethes does? Man, that's hard to say. When Bethes does Elder Scrolls for Oblivion released the horse armor pack for only $2.50, which nowadays seems like absolutely nothing, but back then the world was in shock. Consumers laughed at the idea of mm -hmm. people paying extra money for a cosmetic item. Uh -huh. Now would you look where we are almost two decades later? Over the Damn. years, we've seen some of the most egregious microtransactions. Egregious. GTA 5 Online had a gold in the world of inflation plated plane worth over 10 million in-game dollars, which for a time was the most expensive item in the game. For the ones who don't understand, 10 million in GTA is about $130 in real world currency. But it doesn't just stop there. Even less popular games like 2020's Train Simulator, if added up all the DLCs in that game, it amounted to a whopping $9,605. Our own oh, NBA damn. 2K18 wasn't even safe from the modest touch. You used to have to pay 1500 BC every time for a haircut. So it makes you ask, damn. Why? why do these companies go to these lengths to get every last dollar out of you? Well, it's because they can. Sometimes it's just oh, as simple God. as that. But is there a such thing as a good microtransaction? What are some games that do do microtransactions the right way. We've got games like Fortnite. Uh, we've got uh, oh! maybe, okay, maybe there aren't many good examples. So you're probably asking Batch, if it's such a bad practice, why do companies still do it? In fiscal year of 2023, EA made approximately $4.3 billion in 2022. Activision Damn. Blizzard generated over $5.7 billion. Take Two Interactive made about $1.9 billion in 2022, making up about 64% of their revenue for that year. Look at games like Fortnite, Apex 
Legends, and Rainbow Six Siege, Grand Theft Auto V, all games that have launched over five years ago, but still top the charts in terms of popularity and relevance. Mm. At some point, talk you have to realize talk. it's no coincidence that these games mentioned are riddled with microtransactions, some even in your face as soon as you launch the game. How have games transcended from a small $2 horse deal to being greeted with bundles and currency deals at the main menu? Among all of these games mentioned, NBA 2K has to be the proud student of the gaming industry. They have played their hand in almost all the sales tactics that most of these companies will try, even the more intrusive ones. For all the people watching at home, try this. Launch 2K right now and count how long it'll take to see any sort of microtransaction or in-game purchase. It's likely you saw one as soon as you loaded into the main right. menu. Now let's try another okay. one. Right now, in the comment section, comment down if you have purchased at least $50 worth of microtransactions. For everyone watching, go look at how common this is. Now let's do some quick math. Yeah, NBA do that, 2K yo. Standard Edition, depending on your region, is about $70. If you've spent money on one build alone, you've contributed about $120 to this franchise. Now most of you may not see this as a big issue, but let me remind you that NBA 2K comes out with a new product every year. And unlike a mm -hmm. Call of Duty, Fortnite, or Apex Legends, you cannot take any of your previous purchases or unlocks with you. This is the mm -hmm. main issue when it comes to NBA 2K. They don't even notice that this is- Isn't that crazy? I, I think the average 2K player, and they spend about 300 through 500 plus on this game every year. That's wild, dog. This is why I'm like, if 2K don't do something really good, you do not, you know, speak. You know, y'all can have fun on the game and all this and that, but to speak positively, it just softens the blow, my boy. You feel me? These servers should be open. We should be able to take stuff with us. You feel me? At least our VC, you know? So we got, you know, like to just cut it off, crazy. One of the main reasons this company fails in the perception or public opinion. So what is 2K? Many of you on the channel may know about the business side of 2K from my news videos on the topics, but I want to explain it in more detail for the ones who don't know how deep this corporate greed goes. For the ones that don't know, like many companies, video games operate in subsidiaries. NBA 2K is a game developed by Visual Concepts and published by Take-Two oh, Interactive. Yeah, There's a good chance you've heard that name thrown around the industry before. For the ones living under a rock, TTI is the leading game publisher in the industry, famous for games like the record-breaking Grand Theft Auto franchise and our very own NBA 2K. Two great franchises is famous for putting out corporate mediocrity at a comfortable level these past five years. Now, really mm, just think about what I said, talk. mediocrity for the last five years. And I believe this started around 2K21, prehistoric gen. It was destined to fail when the only way you could move quickly was by quote unquote speed glitching. Then 2K21 mm. next gen came out. That was unbelievably overhyped. I mean, this was the next generation years. Now, really just think about what I said, mediocrity for the last five years. And I believe nah. this started around 2K21. It definitely started before 2K21 for sure. Pre unbelievably overhyped. I mean, this was the guys. I called it. You know what's so funny? I called it. I called all of this. I always call it like young. I'm when it comes to this 2K, I'm the only one with the 2K Bible, man. I be reading the future. I be trying to tell y'all. I be trying to put y'all on, man. I told people, and guess what? I feel the same way about GTA. Well, not the same, but I don't think it's it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna live up to the hype that people uh want it to be. For sure next generation of consoles literally creators thought this game was going to change their lives and it came out to an actual disaster with the game moving at incredibly low frames for weeks by the way and the build system being busted because I if you made anything other than a six foot seven power forward you were putting yourself at a massive disadvantage mm -hmm. and of course once the game already came out 2k couldn't do anything about that i mean you can't just take away people's builds which you know they do from time to time these two games were the beginning of the end crazy? in my opinion and y'all know there were double twisters and defenders of 2K21, just like there are of 24. These are the same guys that was defending 2K18. If a certain type of creator is roasting the game, there are other creators that just dislike those type of creators and viewers that they'll then say they like the game and praise it. Isn't that wild? But this didn't mean they already weren't doing insanely scummy things to us, like wheeling out that little spineless, monotone, should be grabbing rebounds freak, Ronnie 2K, to tell us it's not the same neighborhood, but you can think what you want. That's not the neighborhood, but guys can think whatever you want. Lying to every single person's face. So badge, badge, you got a problem with Ronnie, huh? He got a problem with Ronnie, huh? He could stay at his job while telling us we could get respecking on our players, knowing good and well what he was saying. Meanwhile, the game came out with the same neighborhood and no respecting Yo. your player. It was so bad that Ronnie 2K. Yo, do y'all know that how immaculate respecking would be? And for him to lie about that, how crazy that is? Damn. <laughs> 
Jesus. Lying compilations made of him on YouTube. And keep in mind, this was like the face of the game for a while. This was the community manager, whatever you wanted to call him. He was the guy that talked to all the celebrities. And this is your face, a liar, a known liar. It's disgusting. <laughs> and we're so far gone from the company that had to compete. And it's obvious now after NBA Live is gone that the only reason they put in any effort before was for profit. Back when we had a competition with Live and uh, I don't think of any other games, but there's probably some other ones out there that competed with 2K. Like even just Fortnite and 2K18, they're like, all right, we got to step it up. 2K19 was a pretty solid game. Nowadays, like they can kind of do whatever they want, get away with whatever they want because oh, there's no competition. God. There's no like repercussions for their actions. I can't oh, blame God. them, but it is what it is. What they kind of- You can blame them. You can blame them. What you mean, boy? You can blame them. There's, so there's something called a moral compass. And these guys can't be whining and crying about how people talking about the game, especially with what it does. You feel me? We could talk about it however we want is a competitor right now and if they had a competitor i think they would focus more on making it a good product but i think obviously like from a business standpoint you got to care about the money and then the product as well no passion for basketball no love of the game only mm. profit and to compete now that that's gone it's like a <laughs> breath of fresh air like oh it's good we don't have to be alive anymore we don't have to make anything good just barely serviceable enough mm. for people to enjoy it for y'all want to know how nba live would destroy 2k i wish someone had money i wish someone could talk to live i'm telling you I know, but the live and all the execs, they don't think there's a chance. They they do, they don't understand. If live came out with the game, stopped all that simulation stuff they're trying to do, guys, I love realistic 2K, all that, but trying to push that needle, it's what's actually ruining 2K. The 2K is actually becoming live. Stop trying to beat that at their own game. Just go back. <laughs> You will destroy them. If you make gameplay like 14 through 2K16, especially, you can throw on the 17 too. If you make gameplay like that, even 19, right? You, you can mimic it and not make it exact, but you know, just so you don't get the, you know, copyright infringement. But if you literally make it the same type of gameplay, you will destroy 2K, especially with like the cost of everything. You will destroy 2K. There are so many players that just want to go and help another game because we've been so ah, for years. You know, we want to help you make your game better. But if you just come out with this trash that live has been coming out with, of course, we're not going to know if you go back. This is we're asking for this gameplay. There's so many users that don't even play 2K anymore because they left that gameplay. Millions, millions from realistic to arcade lovers. The game was more realistic and, you know, back then it was just way better, way more faster and responsive. Just so many different things. If you don't believe me, you can go download the games on PC and you could literally see what we're talking about. If live just makes a game like 14 through 16, you will destroy 2K. Bro, you will destroy the whole market share. You will break the industry. They would have to make so many drastic changes. And then that's a W. Then we have competition. And then live will be able to recoup by, you know, making their game a little bit more expensive because then they'll have the base. The first couple of years, at least, you know, you got to have it low so people go and try it. Or just free bro oh my god i'm telling you bro i'm telling you hey, bro anyone with a brain that's really played these you know what i'm talking about this is like a bro this is a billion dollar idea it's a billion dollar idea on oh god oh god in them a few months get them just hyped up to buy the game and we're gone i remember 24 well, i just remember like i remember playing i was like dude like of course i don't play so i'm like i'm not the best anymore i was like yo there's not one move that i can do <laughs> or i've seen anyone do that's like yo i really want to learn how to do this you know and it's like i remember sitting in, in my uh -huh. core people and i was like i gotta learn how to do this i think my team is the worst ultimate uh -huh. team out in sports gaming it's gotten to the stage where i'm getting like i have friends in all the other communities like i have friends in the fifa community i have friends in madden community where i'm getting messages from them being like i didn't realize how bad my team was you're screwed and these are guys that like you would have talked to in previous yeah. years and would have thought my team was better in their game mode.
But now it's at the stage where like they're even coming and playing. They're like logging into my team and saying, this is terrible and not playing it anymore. Let's shift gears for one second to discuss gaming's biggest release ever in the last two decades. Grand Theft Auto 6, a game that isn't even out yet, already projected to outsell the last game, which 10 years ago broke sales records with relative ease and helped set up a marketing method that would break in cash for big time publishers for decades to come. So how does NBA 2K fit into all of this? That's the problem they don't. The current state of mm. NBA 2K is riddled with microtransactions and pay to win mechanics. Does anyone remember when 2K was just about basketball? Damn. Now we have all these battle passes, VC bundles, Miss clothing 14. brands, ads on every court or the city. <laughs> the franchise that ushered in creators like Chris Move, Troy Dan, Agent Zero, Pretty Boy Fredo, all look at the company with resentment and distrust. Even mm. though all of these creators made a living on this game, it's gotta make you think. What does the game have to do to make these people turn away? I mean, I'm not sure how many people have been watching the recent news videos, but 2K24, Kobe Bryant on the cover, right? He, they used in a recent Kobe card drama as the number one card collection on my team that people spent thousands of not only dollars, but hours, hundreds and hundreds of hours of playing the game to get this one specific card for getting so many cards collected. And then the day before they were able to earn it, it was gone. I'm not kidding yeah. if you didn't see this. You actually had to. There was no way to get all these cards without spending a lot of money and a lot of hours into the game. And then they just took away this card right before players could get it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but my friend said the 100 overall cards says less than 2% chance or something like that. But legally, they're able to do that. Although it's not even actually around 2%. It's actually like 0.5% or something like that. Yeah, it's it's way under 0.5%. They've done things in the past where their odds, back in 2021, the odds stopped at 95 overalls. So every single odd just said 100%. They've never been accurate with the odds like all they legally have to do is show odds they're legally okay once they show that there is a 100 percent chance of getting a card that's just insane because you know obviously people that are spending money are wanting that 100 overall and it says less than two but like how many people actually know it's less than two percent like even less than one percent like there's probably a, at least a decent amount that don't know right i think there's a decent amount that don't even know how to find that you can find the odds to be honest you actually have to click into the pack before you find the odds so like you can misclick and buy the pack pretty much or be in a position to buy a pack in the same while you're searching for odds like Wow. Then you can talk about the battle pass where you can buy levels yeah. now. And yes, 2K doesn't really have anything pay to win in it now. Yeah, but most do. of us know this is probably a slippery slope where. I like to see your tone change with the uh, W badge. They added the three point sleeve. Okay? So now you can get one normally and then you can get another one in the pay pass this season. I told you slippery slope. They're going to start adding it, dog. And all the actual good rewards like the mascots, they added a mascot. That you can't get normally they're gonna start doing that and then it's gonna rob people of never being able to get decent rewards bro you like y'all see the reward system this is why i'm so against the pass please guys never buy the pass or it's just gonna get more egregious i'm trying to tell you i don't care if you gotta work this and that guys it's not worth it the floor setters are not worth it none of it is worth it bro i promise you stop buying the passes okay they'll see and then they'll have to regress. But if you keep buying it, guys, it's gonna keep getting worse. It's just like in 14, people were saying, bro, this is cheap. This is $10. I look at the game, you feel me? You gotta, gotta stop, you know? I know like you can't just stop people from playing a game and all this and that, but at least like make better choices. You feel me? Make better choices and you'll hit their pocket. You could play, make your build, but just chill with the other stuff and They'll see and they'll have to chill. You feel me? Or at least keep it the same. Y'all keep pushing, being like, when I come home, I'm just going, you know, I'm going to buy it. Stop I'm telling you. It don't matter that mascot look cool. Don't do it, bro. Because then it's going to be riddled with pay to win. This company's already too egregious. You just got to deal without using it, my boy. 2K is just testing the waters, and in the future, they will most likely add pay to win mechanics and stuff, uh -huh. animations, whatever you can think of in uh -huh. this because they know. And also, they're, they're, they add Gatorade and skill boost in there. Oh, people are going to buy it. Like, yeah, they introduced it and people were upset, but then we can see from the earnings after the game came out that people are buying them. The removal of the auction house in my team. I mean, that is literally what made the mode and it's gone now. It's all gambling to get the best cards is what a lot of people say. I'm not really in the my team community, but from what I've seen, any of the really good cards, you have to gamble basically to yeah, get I, don't like, I know people don't like me saying this because I say it a lot on Twitter, but like it is for some people, it is an addiction. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. they obviously can reel people in with certain things, but like you're opening packs a lot of the time, especially now in my team. Whereas you used to be able to at least argue like, okay, if I wasn't buying MT, I'm opening packs because all I could get all the cards, I could sell them, then I could buy somebody. Oh, like for example, if they wanted Yao, they'd have to open a bunch of packs, sell the cards in packs, and then go and get Yao. But now it's literally a case of you are 
opening packs with no guarantee of getting anything. 100 overall LeBron. You could spend 10,000 on the 100 overall LeBron. And in years past, you could at least sell everything you spent and buy the 100 overall LeBron. Now you just can't get it. So for the people that are continuously opening packs, like likely gone to the stage where it's an addiction more than anything. The rewards aren't even decent in most people's eyes. I would say 95, maybe even more out of 100. Look at these rewards that we're getting in park. These rewards are terrible. Yeah. I mean, actually horrible. I said before 2K24 came out, what 2K should do exactly from start to finish with the rewards, especially for the rep system, right? Where we have plus, you know, three to your playmaking, plus three to your shooting, whatever it is. I said, give us attributes, but they've got to unlock animations, badges. They got to take you from 82 ball handle to 85. And now once you hit that 85 threshold, it can make you speed boost. It can give you these escape moves that you weren't able to unlock. They didn't do that. They're literally just attributes that we don't even know if they work like yeah you go to look at your build and it says plus three whatever but how do you know how do you actually know how do you even trust 2k that but um the main thing they need to focus on is getting people rare rewards that could be attainable from for everyone right and it's just not like some crazy like there should be a lot of cool dope rewards for the lower and the middle and the top and then the tippy top right and it should be like exclusive stuff that you can't just buy later because then it just loses all value and people just hate it because everyone can get it you know just like in fortnite they release a skin you ain't gonna be able to get that hoe for a hell of long time if not like you know you just not gonna get it like it should definitely be stuff like that that's really dope was work i mean it's just insane bro just listen to us i think uh fast and fun is, is, is always gonna be better than simulation in a, in a video game i know she gets a basketball you know video game but i think the way they've kind of broken down like i sound like a broken record right now i haven't said this in a while though so you know i think breaking down the dribbling and taking away the moves momentum behind the back spin speed boosting park size up there really good i think that hurts significantly more than it helps uh just for the fact that you know it's an arcade game the park is arcade you know like no like no one goes to the park and it's like it's 3v3 full court you know like yeah that's not like a, a realistic thing you know oh, so gosh. it's about fun and the games that had dribbling and talk that real we play a full court 3v3 we play a full court 3v3 bro it, it, we're it's already you know so let us fly let us play how we want to play if you gonna do any of that stuff keep it in certain modes but let us play in the park like street ball players and stop like double twisting you feel me stop playing hating let us fly let us do what we want to do stop hating skill gaps and people wanting to stay up all night learning how to, how to do each move mm -hmm. other games that had the, the most fun so for a little under a decade nba 2k has had a pretty repetitive cycle i mean the average player you pay 70 dollars for the game you load up and pay another 50 just to upgrade and that's you know to an 85 overall you might go even higher than that but now you're a little short of some bc so you drop another 20 on bc and you get some animations and maybe one good outfit and just like that you load into the park and get to playing sounds pretty simple right now how about we talk about the other version of nba 2k that many people don't even know about after spending 70 dollars on the game you want to try playing online so you load in and decide to play on your default player nope you can't get a game because the way the game works nobody wants to play with a 60 overall oh brown shirt so what do you do you change clothes right mm, yeah that's not looking like a valid option well i guess you could go back to the park and try to find a game so after about 20 minutes of scrounging and guess what guess what another thing that is horrible and it's just nobody's talking about it they don't listen dog is they force you in games with these players right at least your first game they force you in the game with black cards with low overalls if you're not like above 92 and you can literally play with a 60 overall that's insane 70 you shouldn't be forced to play with people like that you shouldn't be forced to play with people with low overalls or like these black cards like you should not be forced you should be able to back out it's like even from a casual perspective going in the wreck as a black card for wrecking no squad god everyone's gonna leave the lobby they're gonna know you're trash right so it's like so it's like a lot of casuals experience like they're they're getting turned off not only by the microtransactions the trash gameplay but then nobody wanting to play with them. you feel me so it's like if they do try to do like a ranking system or like a fit players with these type of players I don't think they have enough active users. I, I know people keep talking about this and that, but I keep running with AIs all the time, bro. Like they it'd be taking forever to get lobbies. I think the reason they haven't did this is because like fit all black and silver together, then all gold together, or and then all gold and purple together. I don't think there's enough players. They always brag about their numbers, how many users, and all this, and getting you to. 
my boy. I think that's the reason they haven't done it because you just wouldn't be able to get a game. So it's like, you know, what what if like that, that's the reason they're doing it. Now, if there are enough users, then you should definitely put gold and purple together and then silver and uh, or or at least or at least what, what they could do is put black and brown together. Right. And then put silver. Well, I don't I don't know either silver and go to the bottom or go to the top. Right. I've noticed silver players are more tolerable, but the the black and brown cards. Whoa, like I know I know a lot of y'all y'all are probably like they're like, oh, I'm good, and it's like atrocious, boy. But I can understand honestly if they don't do this because there's not enough users, and I personally think it's like that. But if they're if I'm if I'm wrong about it and they're not doing it, that's a L on 2K. I ain't gonna hold you for a game you finally get into a game you lost 22 to 0 and only touched the ball once you missed so now really <laughs> no one wants to hop on the court with you so what else do you play i guess you got my career after fighting through a million cutscenes and whatnot you finally get subbed in you got absolutely no progress on your bar and just in case you guys think i'm such a privileged no player because i create content I'll well here you go to. i've documented from start to finish what it's like grinding a player from 60 mm -hmm. to 99 overall without spending money on vc and without spoiling anything just know this is by far the hardest game to gain vc in it took me almost an entire month month just to amount what someone can get with a hundred dollars and keep in mind badge is a one percenter you will not reach his skill level or his knowledge right as am i we're one percenters i'm a point zero 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 one percenter he's probably one of them too but look listen you you're not gonna have a team of goats to gonna have them he sees that's gonna frustrate you it's gonna really mess up your experience and it's gonna demotivate you so it's be, like, really forcing you to get that vc and it doesn't stop there. That's not to mention player boost, Gatorade, and other animations that have to be paid for. All that stuff really does add up. We live in an era of gaming where you cannot even play the game online without spending money. Roughly how much VC did it cost to max out one of your my players, if you remember? Like 60 all the way to 99. This is like an estimate. So I would say probably about 100K. I believe it was between like four, I think I think around 400,000 VC, I think. I think it costs like above 600,000, I'm pretty sure. It's, uh, probably like 400K, 450, something like around that ballpark range. I think 375,000 VC. But it ranges depending on your build because obviously certain stats cost more. Uh, so I'd say it ranges from 348 to 392,000. But I already know what you're saying. What about my team? It is a serious amount of money that is being spent on this game mode. Like in park, imagine in park what people are spending. There are my team guys spending that almost every week. A year worth of park they be spending. Like there are some guys spending in the multiple hundreds a week. Like it's their jobs. That's what their viewers are there for. So I'm not putting the blame on those guys for doing that. Like I say all that to tell you guys, the main problem playing 2K <laughs> is not just the microtransactions. It's the fact that the player base is so divided, not just between current gen and next gen, but 2K is selling you two different products. 2K is an unplayable game on both platforms if you choose not to buy into any microtransactions. Mm. And even if you don't do that, it's gonna take you so much time to get where someone could just drop a hundred bucks and they are already there. But the biggest mm. offender of all of this is the fact that no matter which route you go, can't <laughs> keep it. Your grind mm. means nothing. In an industry where most games are now letting you transfer years <laughs> of- NBA 2K is still not letting you keep any of your hard earned grind and still twice as expensive. So I'm sure you're asking badge flow, why should we care? Which is a super fair question because to be 100% honest with you guys, I ask myself the same thing every week, but it all gets very simple when you think of the franchise that we used to enjoy. Everyone loves worse. NBA 2K16. Maybe like 20% of people watching this weren't even old enough to have experienced that game though. Mm. I mean, everyone at home just down, uh, never mind. I guess you would never know. Physical media is one of the most controversial topics when it comes to gaming. And 2K is one of the worst offenders of that. Not only do the servers for every 2K game shut off after two years, but 90% of the franchise isn't able to be purchased. In a world where people are so heavily opinionated, it's almost impossible to please a mass audience. Think of Call of Duty, for example. If you don't like the newest game, you don't have to play it. Right now, guys, if you want to experience the old 2Ks, there are servers, guys. I'm serious. If you play, change Okay, there were a lot of young cats who didn't know what we were talking about with the old 2Ks. They were like the new age, right? They was, you know, they was calling us this, that, but then they went and played them. Even the old heads and the new young heads, they're like, wow, the game was just way better. It's a sickness. Everything I say and try to get 2K to be like is like those older games. It's not like I'm creating some new game or trying to. It once existed. Everything I suggest is something that once existed. 
Now, you can play any Call of Duty game you want online or offline. When it comes to 2K, all you have is a couple hundred Pretty Boy Fredo videos and a Chris Move My Career series. <laughs> if every creator could go back and post any 2K, like all the servers came on tomorrow, right? And they stayed on. Do you think the community would be in a better place? I think oh so, because there's like a little bit of a... Yeah, I think so, because I think there's like legacy games, right? I mean, the content would definitely be flowing in. Um, I feel like after like a little bit, folks will probably just gravitate whatever has the most people on it. Happy? I mean, yeah, folks will be happy maybe for like a month. Initially, there would be a lot of excitement, yeah. Yeah, there'd be a quick realization that all of the nostalgia we have for those past games, there was just as much quote unquote wrong with those games as there is with whatever current. Joe is one of the uh, late bloomers on the 2K. No, no disrespect, but everyone who's like that, they have uh, these type of opinions, you know? All just because, you know, someone either told them you wouldn't have been good at this 2K or your channel wouldn't have been good at this 2K. So they develop these type of uh, opinions, but he doesn't understand he would enjoy them games way more and it would help his channel and everyone's and all this and that. And the amount of problems with the game were way less. That's the whole point of us wanting them old games. Romanticizing the past isn't real. You can go get on the game and try it yourself, disprove, okay? But you won't, <laughs> you won't go disprove. It. You could go, like it could be measured. It could be measured, it could be debated. And I can prove that all these issues, it was nowhere near the same level. Guys, there was no takeover. There were no Hall of Fame badges. You feel me? You understand? There was no accidentally fading. Like you could shoot when you wanted to shoot. There was no paint mashing, you know? That in, that invented in 2K18 after. You, it was just way better design. There's real fluid movement. Everything was more responsive, but um, yeah, like if you look at like just the gaming, people go back and they play these old games and they pull a ton of views, right? So it's just like if all the games are just out there to play. You know, imagine the content you have available. You could really just go back, drop a 16 video, drop a 15 video, drop a 17 video, and it expands you as a creator, right? But when it's just like this, you know, it limits you as a creator. But also at the same time, this will never happen. So there's no reason to even talk about it. It will never happen. Like there's just no chance because 2K wants to sell their game, their most recent game, and they got investors and all this and that, a lot relying on their new game. They know if they open all them old servers, people aren't playing their newest game. It does not matter. The game plays way better back then. So they're not doing that. And then you didn't have to spend all that VC back then, unless they just start making crazy microtransactions back. It's, it's just not gonna happen, right? So they would lose a ton of money and people will just play way better 2Ks and people won't even be on the new game and all the advertisers. That's, this is why it just won't happen. Playing. I don't I don't think it would change anything just simply because of like rosters or like if you're just talking about park I can see people going back and playing them But like do people go back and play like old Call of Duties that much like they might go back once in a while But I don't think they would like consistently go back to play older 2k's I'm gonna say yes Like much better it might be a little crazy, but like it would be better Like just having that option to like go back and play like black ops 2 is kind of cool Like some people like that, but I, I don't think it would be like drastic, but I, yeah, I mean, it would be cool. I mean, yeah, I feel like the best content in the 2K community is like well behind us. Like we had all of AMP come up. We had like the My Team era with like Jesser, Cash, mm -hmm. OSN. Like if they were always on, I wonder if that's true. But if they just kind of like now, like I think it definitely would give a boost because it's like there's like legacy games, like, you know, the whole community loves 17. Um, So I think if, if people could go on and play 2017 and then my personal favorite 16 or 15, I think people, I think people would gravitate to play, yeah. So why do games get delisted? It can be for numerous reasons, but most of the time when a game is made, whether it has certain music, or brands, they have to pay for a license. Once that license is up, the company has to pay to renew it. This is why even the most popular games such as Grand Theft Auto never use real life brands in their video games. When it comes to music, it's mostly the same. Damn, even older games like GTA and San Andreas Remastered have plenty of songs from the original game removed, which definitely compromise the overall feel and nostalgia factor that the game had. So when you think of 2K, every game has hundreds of clothing brands and a bunch of songs. Do the math. They don't want to pay to keep the servers up and they won't pay to renew any of their licenses for their old games. 2K has come to a point where they'd much rather focus on making as much money as possible rather than focus on making sure players are happy. Ultimately, they you gotta switch wonder where it all out. Headed. How far will 2K take it? Will we go back to getting fully pay to win mechanics? Will 2K eventually bring back the auction house? Will the BC prices finally be reduced? That sad answer is probably no. As we all know, 2K is the leading only AAA basketball game in the market, and it's looking to stay that way for the foreseeable future. So what 
can we, as the consumers do, to get in between 2K and their invasive corporate tactics? Sadly, the answer is as simple as speaking with our wallets. It's no secret whether the community likes 2K24 or not. No one enjoys the constant microtransactions forced into this game. Even when 2K games come out unfinished and a mess at launch, the store will always be one of the first things working. Changes like this won't just happen over the first things working. Changes like this won't just happen overnight, and it definitely won't affect the answer is as simple as speaking with our wallets. It's no secret whether the community likes 2K24 or not. No, no one enjoys the constant microtransactions forced into this game. <laughs> Even when 2K games come out unfinished. Bro, these were the days, bro. Bro, this is so, bro. This bring back so many memories, bro. People would literally stream snipe me. These big, I be dribbling, dog. And I can't see what my player did. Oh my God. Bro, this is so funny. Like, I don't even remember how people did this, bro. So there would be boxes everywhere they go pull up, bro. It was just so funny, bro. Oh my god, man. Oh, that was so. This should be an event. I ain't gonna hold. This would be a hilarious event, bro. <laughs> this was so funny, bro. My god, this was so funny. In a mess at launch, this that was more in seventeen than it was in sixteen store will always be one of the first oh things my working. God, Changes like so this funny. won't just happen overnight and it definitely won't affect 2K25. But the first step to creating change is at least knowing what you want to change. All of us want this franchise to be just like the old days and the only way that can happen is if we can get 2K to prioritize us and not the shareholders. Everyone in the mm. comment section be 100% honest. If you enjoyed playing NBA 2K just like the old days, if the servers always work, if the game didn't need a million patches in the first month, you wouldn't mind paying for microtransactions. But here we are in a gaming world where most of these highly successful games are riddled with microtransactions transactions just like 2k do you think nba 2k24 is a good product uh can i can i can i be like in the middle is it a good product i haven't played enough to get to tell you i really i like i'd be damn in the middle flex i'd be like lying if i gave it an answer at all you know it's so like based off of the, your own individual like like how you see it you know exactly like i feel <laughs> like it's okay like it's not ass. i feel like last year was really bad i don't know like okay. i feel last year was <laughs> bro so for me I think 23 was the worst 2K, but then 24 came out and then it became the worst. That's crazy. Back to back 2Ks. And there's a lot of people that feel like that too. That were like the worst 2Ks ever. And like dethrone 18. That is wild, bro. That is like a generational run. I feel like this year is a step up, but it's not like any of the previous ones that we had like 17, 16, 17, 18, not 18. 18 is crazy. No. Personally, for me, yes. It's a genuine consensus, like, <sighs> online. Like, if you posted TikTok saying 2K24 is good, or if you say 2K24 is good on a badge plug video, yeah, you know, it's like a trend to hate on 2K. So people are going... It's a trend to praise 2K. You get um, a more support and love being positive about it. Like, for instance, if you make a video saying you like 2K, like, bro, even, like, on TikTok, you will get, like, a bunch of support. So like people try and say like, oh, like it's why is it a trend? Because they feel the same. It's not fake. It's real feelings. It's not like some fake trend. It's a real thing. But also there are some people that are still, most people around in the community they somewhat mess with 24 or they're just loving their time, just playing a video game and they're just happy in life, right? I'm telling you, I see a lot of people who be saying uh that they like the game and they get, support like overall because most of the people who don't like the game they don't even watch 2k at all like they see a 2k video and they're done like not interested they'll never be recommended it again so the people around they somewhat like it so is that really true to disagree with you okay for me personally yes simply for one reason and that was comp pro -M. this year comp pro -M was so much fun for me for four or five months that I see and th this is what a lot of uh people also don't understand if you're achieving something you never once achieved before, it's gonna hit different. It's gonna give you a whole different reality, right? But that doesn't mean it's true. Now, if Joe Knows played Comp Pro Am in all these other 2Ks and really got to experience it and play versus all this and that, would he feel the same? He definitely wouldn't. But he finally went to that level and that brings so much thrill and excitement that it, you know, it makes it way more bearable. So, and a, a lot of people, creators or users, they finally reach a level of skill and they compete in environments that they never competed in. So then they get a thrill that they didn't in the other two Ks. So they're like, man, I like this one more. 
But the reason you feel like that is because you're getting that thrill of the competition. Like you're pushing yourself, you're in an environment, you know, you're in like a, ooh, wah, ooh, wah, wah, you know? But if you did that back then, then would you feel the same? You feel me? It's all, there's a lot of different perspectives. It all is about your perspective and where you're at. That that should always be mentioned. A lot of people they're they're not aware of. This. I really played it. Playing and this is with everything games, in life. Against, you know, top players for tons of money. This is with everything in life, video games and all that. On a night in night out basis, yes, I enjoyed that thoroughly, and the ability to be able to enjoy that came through NBA 2K. It's just like in 2K18, that was the worst 2K for a while, but that was my funnest year in a uh, pro am, right? Like the game was horrible, but that was when I was dropping off 2K League players, right? A lot of 2K people in the 2K League now, I was carrying them back in 2K18 in Pro-Am, right? I dropped 72 points on someone who's in the 2K League right now in 2K18 Pro-Am. The, the Pro-Am community was like at its peak then. Maybe, I don't I don't know. But like like everyone was going for it because the, the iteration of the 2K League, like there was a lot of you know, people just playing it and all that. So it was very like competitive. So, you know, you got to really play a lot of people and there was a lot of energy in it. It was fun, you know, even with the trash gameplay and all this and that. And that was like the year that I played Pro-Am the most. But if I did that in every year, would I feel the oh. same? You know, I could detach from things. I could still see like, oh, this is still horrible, even though I'm having fun playing Pro-Am. And I can see why I'm happy for Do you think NBA 2K24 is a good product? Yes. Yes, NBA 2K24 is two main game modes as far as microtransactions are concerned in my team and my player are terrible. I think my era is, is the best franchise mode in any sports. I think the my career story, while some people aren't that into it, is still ye light years ahead of what any other sports game has. I think play now online is okay. I think it plays fine. I think as a product, NBA 2K24 is, but I think there are just the two it's main aspects crazy. for online players are two of the worst in gaming. If you're not spending microtransactions and you can like actually play the game and you're just a basketball fan, I'd say yeah. If you're trying to play park or my team, I'd say no. The fact that you have variety, that makes it a good product in my eyes but the malicious microtransactions make it not a good product there's just so many things we could talk about guys that's it i don't really know man you guys let me know how you feel but it's not looking good for us and it hasn't been for a long time i'm out peace y'all make sure y'all like my video shout out to young bad y'all go check out my last video you see young brute hating on young swan man but hey hey here we go again yeah. here we go again people talking this but when this hit the fan Everything I'm that made me, now break it down, yo, off the top of the dome, dome.